Hey, I'm Jared and welcome to the Running Mechanics Lab. I'm here with Dr. Ian Hunter in his lab and Kaylee, and I'm excited to talk about developing some of the fastest shoes on the market. It happens right here in this lab. Way back in fall of 2018, I got a box of prototypes on my doorstep and I brought them to Doc and said, I have a race in five days. Which shoes should I wear? <laughs> I remember you bringing those to me and I'm thinking, Jared, you are nuts for thinking of changing your racing shoe the week of the race and you've never even seen them before, worn them. And we thought, you know, Wednesday before the race is a four by mile workout at race pace. Why don't we do it on the treadmill, test these three prototypes compared to, I believe you were gonna wear the Kinvara. Mm -hmm. And so we got on the treadmill, five minutes at each uh, shoe. And it was just, Kinvara was here, prototype one here, prototype one here, and then prototype three down here on energy cost. So we finished the run and I waited to tell you till you were done. I said, Jared, I think there's a shoe that might work for you. And then... It was 4.4% uh, better. So I wore it that uh, later, later that week in the New York City Marathon, and it went better than I expected. And a lot's happened since that, uh, that <laughs> first shoe. A lot's happened since this one. This one was one of the first prototypes that came when Jared was getting ready for the New York Marathon. And this one didn't respond as well, but the one that did had a different foam. It was lower density and ended up compressing a bit further. They're still stiff having that carbon fiber plate. What we learned through the years is they kept developing better and better foams and adjusting the shape of the shoe and some other factors. We were able to get Jared coming off the ground with less force loaded onto the body, but a longer stride. And as a result of that, less energy to run whatever speed he was going. So the same kind of effort of running led to less load on the body. And through the years, the three factors they've mainly focused on are the type of foam, the plate that's inside, and the shape of mainly what is happening with the uh, shoe reacting with the ground. And those three factors combined, and us just looking at how Jared responds metabolically to each, has led to better and better shoes and the, the threes that I believe are on your feet right now, um, those have been the best performing to this point of those that are heading out to the market. So the main thing we're interested in is how much energy it takes to run. Jared will wear a mask like this that um, has some outputs. There's more equipment than just the mask. It lets us know how much oxygen stays in his body, which is directly related to the energy cost of running. So if we can find a certain shoe where that energy cost is lower, we know we're onto something good. The other aspect is what's going on within the body. So we use this treadmill here, which measures the forces that we see on the ground, combined with putting reflective markers, kind of like you see with uh, Hollywood movies and so on, and we track the motion. And we're finding that there are certain movements and positions that seem to be really effective for helping drop that metabolic cost. And as you change something in a shoe, you get those movements to match what's desired, and that hopefully drops the energy cost even more, leading to faster and faster race times for those running in those shoes. So it starts with measuring oxygen and oxygen uptake across shoes to find which one's the best, and then it's a game of finding out why? Was it the foam? Was it the shape? Was it where the plate was or how the plate's interacting or the speed? And um, that's where it gets fun kind of diving into some of that force data and motion data to direct conversations of feedback to go back and say, hey, this shoe's a lot better. It might be because of this. So let's continue to innovate in this space and see if we can get some improvements. It's nice that we have a statistician interested in these kind of questions. All the data coming in, we need to know what, what, so what, when it all comes in. And some could misinterpret some of the data that we receive, but Jared's stats background and interest 
uh, has helped take the data that I can produce and understand it effectively. Well, most of the time when I put a shoe on and we start the treadmill up and we're going marathon pace or, or whatever we're testing at, I can tell pretty soon if that shoe is going to be better than the last shoe. But not always. Sometimes there seems to be a little bit of a learning curve to a shoe, right? If it changes drastically how I'm moving, it might feel awkward for a little while before I adjust to it and, uh, and we see some of those benefits. So it's, it's certainly important to look at the numbers, but I do think a lot of the times I can just feel it. And, and the underfoot experience is important too. If I get in a shoe and I think, oh, this shoe's not very stable, even if I'm running better in it, then that directs a conversation of, you know, how can we make the shoe a little bit more stable, a little bit more comfortable? It feels like it's slipping out of my heel. How can we hold it on a little bit? And so uh, that, that user experience, how it feels, those certainly play, um, play a part of the collaboration that we get to do uh, when working with Saucony and working with shoes. But, but ultimately, you know, for me, I, what makes my heart beat a little bit faster maybe it makes it beat a little bit slower, is when I put on a shoe that's gonna make me faster. And I get excited about that. Along with the oxygen measurements and the body positioning and forces on the ground, something we've been really interested in lately is understanding where is that energy saving coming from? We figure it has to be something with the larger muscles in the lower body, but we're wondering uh, what are the muscles actually doing? So we also include what we call electromyography, EMG is a common term used for that, where we can actually measure how active the muscles are. So we have a student that's taken a whole collection of people this case, I think Jared was our first subject in that study, and we're looking at the muscle activity in the Endorphin Pro 3 compared to the Type A, which are very different shoes that initially had exactly the same purpose, fast road racing. And we don't have enough uh, data in there yet or statistics done to get an answer there, but we're curious about where is it that the muscles are working less that allows for that lower energy cost in running. We might be able to get at the point where you can uh, pick a shoe that saves the muscle group that get stressed during a race for you. So if your quads take the beating in a marathon, then maybe we can put you in a shoe that is gonna save those quads or hamstrings or whatever. And so it's, it's kind of exciting to, to figure out uh, questions that are diving into more specificity of, of how these shoes are interacting and affecting the body and performance. That's a good thought, because you think of using an elliptical and you can adjust the inclines and things to say work here more, work here more. That shape and roll of the shoe, maybe that would shift the load a little from one area to another. Sure, yeah, for me as a heel striker, it's certainly the, the shape of the shoe has put me a little more assertive in my posture, maybe a little bit more midfoot. And so I do feel a little less stress on my quads that used to take it and a little more on my hamstring. But, you know, but it's just, uh, it's an interesting idea that we can target muscle groups or save muscle groups based on what's mm -hmm. going under our foot. Yeah. It's kind of cool. There's been a few people researching these, these new super shoes, we often call them, around the country and world. And everyone seems to be coming to the conclusion that the primary factor is the foam. The responsiveness of the foam, the density of it, the compression that it goes through. There was a lot of talk early on where people thought this carbon fiber plate is acting as a spring and it shouldn't be allowed. It's not working as a spring in ways that seem to benefit the runner actually. It stiffens up the foot a little bit. That changes some things with the foot and ankle positions, but mostly it's the foam. And the plate is in there to give some integrity to that foam so that when you turn a sharp corner, it's not just collapsing into itself and the person falling over. That plate just holds things together a bit better. Real minimal effect on the benefit for running economy from the plate. So mostly it's the foam, a little bit the plate, and then the shape. What, what have you felt with that? I do think the shape affects, uh, affects the performance. And I think the shape encourages 
different running posture. So the, the shape puts me in a more assertive position. I remember the first time I pulled on an Endorphin Pro with the speed roll shape dialed in. And I thought, I, I don't feel like I'm running a marathon, even at marathon pace. I feel like the only pace these shoes can handle is a half marathon. And it, and it was just because it changed um, how assertive I was into my stride put me a little bit more forward and I feel like that effect has uh, allowed me to take advantage of, of other muscle groups per particularly post you know my my back uh, you know hamstrings glutes and that stuff a little bit more and so I do think that the shape of the shoe um, and not only not only affects that anecdotally but but the shape of the shoe affects how the energy transfer, the energy return from the foam is put back into your foot to propel you. And so the, the shape has to work with the foam and the stability of the plate to make it work. It, you know, it's interesting. It, 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 sometimes we think we have a certain aspect of this dialed in and so we tweak part of it and then it doesn't work as well. And, and it really, it's a, it's a package deal of these three things working together that allows the shoe to perform and, um, and there's synergies from those effects, I think, as well. So uh, what's next for shoes? You know, we're seeing three things that you can modify right now. The shape, the foam, and the plate. And there's, I just had a good visit with some of the uh, engineers at Saucony, and we got excited about some potential future directions with that. The rules limit some things, but there's leeway within those rules to make some good appropriate changes in shoes, and I think we're gonna keep getting faster. Well, uh, I like that. Okay, well, that's a wrap in the Running Mechanics Lab with Doc and company. This is where it started, this is where it's happening, and we got some exciting stuff in the pipeline. So, let's keep playing.